Hello, my name is Paul Markovic and in this video I will introduce you to three models, which is information, resource and behaviour model. I will aim to introduce those three particular models both in the context of business here on the left hand side as well as the context of API and systems here on the right hand side. So let's start, let's imagine the broker approaches underwriter with submission and submission naturally is a collection of information and let's let's pick an example of those um, elements of information so let's say there is a submission reference there is an inception date um, being 4th of April 2020 for example and then there is an expiry date a year later now there are obviously a certain constraints about those pieces of information let's say the submission reference must start with B and then must have a minimum length of six characters and is composed of alphanumeric characters. Let's say inception date and expiry date both must be of a date format and uh, fundamentally inception date should always be less than the expiry date. Now let's imagine Broker Pass system is integrated with placing platform and sends those API details over and the API actually validates those basic rules and checks if the data passes those validations it is successfully written in the placing platform database. If not, the API rejects the posting of the submission record. Important to note here is that the API does not need to communicate with the underlying placing platform in order to execute the validation of those basic rules. So all the things discussed so far cover the aspects of information model details, which is probably as close as one can get to the data standard. Now, all those details mentioned can be found in information model section of the portal. There, we can actually see the value specifications, which provide constraints on individual data elements. We can also explore the classes and individual attributes, and that includes the attribute descriptions, the data types, and the examples. Well, here, here we have inception date and expiry date, as well as intramodal rules, where we bind more than one data attribute, like the expiry date is before the inception date. Now let's consider that the inside the broker system the submission record is kept together with the attachments. But the API specifies separately the resource for the submission and separately for documents. And that's the key aspect of the documentation of API. The endpoints, the resources, is how the API presents itself to other systems and how it requires other systems to submit the information and to retrieve the information. So we might have multiple different resources and endpoints and the broker and underwriter systems will use different methods like post, put to either create or update or get to retrieve the records. All this will form part of the resource model. Detailed specification of what API expects on the input and what API can provide on the output. And all these details can be actually found on the resource model section of the portal with resource model, access to the resources and every single resource described and defined, including methods like, for example, post, get or put. Finally, let's consider a scenario a broker approaches underwriter with a submission. Let's say the submission reference is B1234002. The underwriter then requests additional information and subsequently broker provides additional document, let's say B, annotating on this document that this is the attachment relevant for previously provided submission. So we have attachment to the submission reference B1234003. And we can see that there is an intentional error here because this attachment was intended for a submission reference ending with 002. Right, so let's now look at the system integration for the very same scenario now. On the right hand side we've got a broker system and we have a submission A which is getting posted through API to the placing platform and we can see this record is clearly generated in the placing platform database. Worth mentioning here is that if it succeeded with a successful post method, clearly that means that all the information rules we were talking previously about have also been satisfied. 
Let's now consider the broker system is um, sending the attachment to the submission reference. And we can see it being posted to the API and there the basic validation is actually successful because the submission reference is of the correct format and it ticks all the boxes of the information model rules which we previously talked about. But what happens next is the behavior rules kick in and there are checks to be performed to ensure that there exists a submission record this document can be attached to by checking the underlying placing platform records. This returns an error as such submission does not exist. And as a result, API returns the error that the additional document record has not been created, providing specific error message back to the broker system. For example, no such submission reference exists, cannot attach to non-existing submission record. So in the essence, the behavior model provides us with constraints and rules which ensure consistency across end-to-end -end business process and how it is reflected in underlying database records. Those details on behavior model can be found in the behavior model section of the portal and the behavior rules are organized by resource, actor and method. And we can see a detail here which talks exactly about the example we provided and refers to the non-existent submission whilst uploading the attachment. And it also provides the error messages expected. This concludes the introduction to information, resource and behaviour model. And we hope you found this video useful in explaining our models, their concepts and objectives.